up y'all welcome back to my channel it's ray if you're new here welcome today is another day where i am going to be answering a frequently asked question so um if you haven't watched my last frequently asked question video i'll link it here so you can go and take a look at it but today's question is about um diys do i how do i feel about them do i do them um do I like them? Blah, blah, blah. So, what I want to say first, as far as um, DIYs are concerned, is that I don't have a problem with DIYs. Um, if that's something that you want to do, I say go for it. Make sure you do your research. I personally don't do DIYs. So, and I'll get into why in a minute. Um, I will say that I do plan on doing an Aztec clay wash where, you know, you buy the Indian healing clay and you add apple cider vinegar or water or whatever. That is something that I would do. If it's something I just got to pour some liquid in and stir it up, I may do that. But to say that I do DIYs for my hair products, I don't do it. Um, again, I don't have a problem with it. If it's something that you like to do, I say go for it. I just say make sure that you do your research. Don't just go on one person's channel or see one thing where someone is putting something in their hair and then you go and do it and you use it for your hair. You do your own research so you know what these products do, how they're going to benefit your hair. Um, if the molecules in these products or these foods that you're using are even small enough to penetrate your hair. So that is some um, of the things that you need to worry about when doing DIYs. So um, I know back in the day when I first went natural, a lot of people were doing DIYs. They were doing um, using avocado on their hair and mayonnaise on their hair and honey on their hair and egg on their hair and all these um, foods that you have in your refrigerator, which there's nothing wrong with that. You don't see it as much now, at least I don't. I don't see it as much now as I used to and I think it's because products have come a long way since then. Um, back then there weren't a whole lot of natural hair product lines out and people started just kind of doing things in their kitchens to get what they wanted if they weren't finding it on the shelves. So, um, and they were wanting some more natural things versus, you know, using silicones and a lot of parabens and things like that. So, um, it has been done. People have put egg and honey and avocado and all that in their hair and some people still do. A lot of products now that are out already incorporate some of those things into their products, especially avocado. You will see avocado in a lot of natural hair products across the board. And um, you'll see honey in a lot of those products and so forth. So it's not um, as needed to do it yourself at home as it used to be, in my opinion. But some people do it just because they enjoy doing it. So. Um, I'm not one of those people. I don't enjoy doing it. I don't want to have to think about it. I don't want to have to add things to my grocery list um, because I'm thinking about making a mask and okay, now I need this and I need this. I don't want to think about how long is it going to last? What is the shelf life? Because you will have to worry about the shelf life with these products because it's natural uh, foods and things like that that you're using. Um, so, you know, now you got to write dates on stuff and keep stuff in the refrigerator. That's just more to think about for me. I don't want to think about it. I'd rather go to the store, pick up what I need with the ingredients that I like and use it and know that it's going to last probably a year. Um, and I'm probably going to use it up before then anyway. So it's, it's not going to matter. Um, that's my preference. That doesn't mean that that's better than what anybody else wants to do. If you're talking more about um, Ayurvedic type DIYs where you're using the powders, um, 
and things of that sort. I don't know enough about that. I'm just gonna be honest. I haven't done the research on it. I don't know enough about it to, to do it. And because it doesn't really interest me to do DIYs, I haven't really looked into it and researched it. So I can't speak on that. I don't, I don't know uh, what kind of shelf life things like that um, has. So if you're just making like a, uh, an Ayurvedic um, mask or oil with, you know, um, I'm trying to think of an Ayurvedic um, powder um, that people use and they mix up into their deep conditioners or into oils and things like that. Um, I should have, I should have looked it up and wrote it down, but again, it's just, I just don't do it. I don't feel like it fits into my um, lifestyle right now. So yeah, um, that's my feeling on DIYs. Now, will I ever do them? I don't know. I'm not gonna say I never will. I don't see it at this point, but once my son, you know, moves out, goes off to college and I'm just here, don't really have to take him around to, you know, AAU basketball and basketball for school and football and, you know, all this and I have a little bit more downtime to myself and I have the time to whip up stuff in my kitchen and things like that, I might. But right now it just doesn't fit into my schedule. But for those of you who do it and who love it, that's great. If you're on my channel and you were wanting to see those type things, I'm gonna tell you now, you're probably not gonna see it here. But what I will do is give you um, some names of some other YouTubers who um, do, do, do DIYs or have done them um, in the past a lot. And maybe you can go over to their channels and find what you need over there. So, hey, I'm happy to do that. So, one of the YouTube channels that I do watch, one of the YouTubers that I do watch is Sheree Del Sol. And she does do um, quite a bit of DIYs. She has her own um, rice water DIY and um, her different um, oil blend and a whole lot of other things that she does. She does use a lot of those Ayurvedic herbs. So if you're into that, that's you're gonna get some of that information on her channel. She also goes into telling you what the ingredients are and how they're better, how they're best for your hair and things like that. She does some DIY clays and all that type of stuff. So her channel is a good one to maybe start with. Um, and I watch her channel because I learn from her channel. Do I do it myself? No, but I do learn from her channel about, you know, the different clays um, and the Ayurvedic herbs and things of that sort. So I just like to take in the information, but I haven't used it to do it myself. And then she also has other videos as well, just like um, I do, which are product reviews, um, hauls and things of that sort too. And she has a great personality. So take a look at her channel. Another person that does uh, DIYs is um, Natural, Natural 85. I'm sure you all have heard of her. She's been on YouTube for years. Um, I don't know that she does as many now as she did. She has already launched her own product line. So I'm sure a lot of what she learned back then doing DIYs has helped her to um, launch her product line, which is the um, melanin hair care line. Um, take a look at her channel and you may have to go back a little bit, but if you put in DIY YouTubers that do DIYs or something like that, she's definitely gonna pop up. So she has DIYs on probably most things that you want to know, and she's gonna be a good one. And then another YouTuber is Fusion of Cultures fusion of culture. So she actually has um, some products as well, um, a shea butter and things like that that she's already launched, but she also do she also does um, DIYs as well, different type masks, and she uses some of those Ayurvedic herbs and things like that in her mask. So those are three different people that I can refer you to if that is something that you're interested in um, learning more about, trying to do it yourself at home and things of that sort um and they all have different type hair and their hair is all different lengths 
anyway. Um, and it's all different thicknesses of hair um, and hair strands. So try to look at those people to see if you can get um, more information that you want on DIYs. Now, the other thing that I wanted to say about DIYs is again, do your research um, because a lot of things that you see on YouTube may not necessarily be beneficial for you. A lot of the things that people put on their hair, like I said, like the avocado and egg and all that kind of stuff, which can be good for your hair, is actually just as good if you just eat those things. <laughs> so, um, so I'm not saying don't do it, I'm just saying be aware, make sure that it is going, those things are gonna penetrate your hair strands so you're gonna get out of it what you intend to get out of it. It doesn't make sense to do a whole lot of DIY mask and all these things, treatments, and then your hair doesn't feel any differently than it did before you have done it. So, although I gave you these people and I think that they are very knowledgeable about the different DIYs that they do, um, you still wanna do your own research. So say, for instance, honey. Honey is a humectant, it's really good um, for your hair. Honey is already in a whole lot of products. That's great. But do you wanna put straight honey on your hair? Probably not, right? You wanna be able to mix it with something so it's not so sticky and so that you're, it's easy, easily rinsed out and things of that sort. You wanna make sure that you don't leave it on your hair too long and your hair sticks together and all that. Um, also, honey will um, lighten your hair. So a lot of people don't know that, um, depending on how much you use it and thinking how long you leave it on and things of that sort. That You just kind of have to look at all the um, ins and outs of these products, not just listen for, oh, it's a humectant, it's gonna make my hair moist. Yeah, or it's gonna make my hair soft, or it's gonna give moisture to my hair. That's true, but then it'll also lighten your hair. So if you're not interested in having your hair lightened, you may wanna make sure you do all the research you need to do to make sure you don't do something that's gonna cause the honey to lighten your hair. So, same thing with all products. So, um, those are the reasons that I don't do DIYs. I just don't feel like, um, is something that I want to get into. I don't want to do all the research. I don't want to be a, become a chemist, quote unquote, mixing up stuff and trying to figure out what things go together or work best together and things of that sort. Um, I feel like when I go to the store and pick up a product that has the honey in it, that has avocado or whatever, the person, the, the company, the, the brand that has made this product has already done the research. They've already put all the other ingredients in it to make sure that everything works together and that it's able to be broken down in such a way that my hair will accept it or your hair will accept it. Now, does it mean that everything is gonna work that you buy on the shelf? No, it doesn't. Everything doesn't work for everybody's hair, but it has been tested on many people and you know for many people it does work for it, right? So that's different than just going and getting all this stuff and putting it in your hair and your particular uh, formula or the person that you got this particular uh, recipe from, it worked for them, but that's one person. That's one person that you know that has used it and has tried it. Unless you go into their comments and you see a whole lot of people saying, I tried this, I tried this, it worked, it worked, it worked. I have 3B hair, it worked. I have 4A hair, it worked. I have this hair, it worked. I have low porosity, high porosity, it worked, it worked. And you see a lot of different people with a, little, a lot of different type hair that it worked for, then you probably have a good re um, chance that it'll work for you. But if you're going by one person and it worked for them, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna work for you. So that's kind of like the difference. You kind of have to weigh it something that's been in a store that a lot of people, the masses have probably picked up and used. And, you know, most people like it as opposed to something that someone made in their home and only a few people have tried it. And, you know, so that is it. I don't have anything against it. 
I like watching people who do DIYs and how they work for their hair. I like learning about different things that go into it. Um, I just don't want to do it. I don't have the time to do it right now. And if you do have the time to do it, go check out those three channels that I told you about. There's another lady um, on YouTube who who does DIYs and her hair is almost down her back. And I see her face as plain as day, but I can't think of her name right now. But she'll probably come up if you start researching these, she'll probably pop up too. Um, oh, I see it, it seems like it's on the tip of my tongue. But there's a lot of people, you know, out there who who is doing it. I just, at this time in my life, I just feel like there's so many good brands out there that has these ingredients in it. If you like Avocado Natural Club, um, a lot of their products have avocado in them and then you do have to store their products in the refrigerator as well and you have to order those products. But then there's other products that are on the shelves that have, you know, really good ingredients in them as well. And I don't have to do the work. So that's me, That's I, I prefer that. So. Um, I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's good. I think it's whatever your lifestyle um, dictates to you to do. You know, if you like that and it saves you money by mixing up your own stuff and you're at home a lot, then hey, that may be the route to go for you and you know what's in your products and you don't like a whole lot of you know, parabens and preservatives and all that kind of stuff, and you know you can use it up, that may be the right route for you. But if you're someone who's on the go, who doesn't have the time, who's not really as um, ingredient conscious as someone else, then just pick it up. Now, I do look at ingredients. I don't like silicone. Silicones don't really work for my hair. I don't necessarily like um, gels with the xanthan gum in them I found. My hair doesn't necessarily like that. But pretty much anything else, I haven't had too much of an adverse reaction to. So, you know, I try to get, I try to use things as natural as possible. Um, I will use sulfates every blue moon to make sure that my hair is um, clean um, of any kind of buildup and things like that. But, for the most part, I try to stay away from sulfates and I try to stay away from silicones. Anyway, but yeah, you just have to do what's best for your hair. Um, but that is it. I hope that answers your question. I don't feel like DIYs are bad. I don't feel like they're good. I feel like they are, um, they have their place just like anything else. And I think that you have to figure out what's best for your budget for your family, for your time, for your lifestyle to decide if DIYs are what you wanna do or not wanna do. And you need to do your research to make sure that the DIYs you're putting together are actually gonna work for your hair. And hey, if you got time to do all that, then I say go for it. Um, but don't forget, check out those three channels that I gave you and come back and let me know if you've used um, any DIYs that you got off of those channels and how you like them, come back and share it with me. I'd be happy to hear how it went for you. If um, you have any other questions that I didn't answer, leave those questions in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer those. And yeah, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you're following me over on Instagram. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.